Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and this is another campfire. It is our sixth campfire of Night Marathon. And for this one, we are going to be focused on mimics and shadow people. I am, as always, pretty excited about this topic. I kind of like all the topics I cover, that's why I cover them, but uh, I think mimics in particular are probably some of the creepiest paranormal stories that are out there, at least as far as I'm concerned. So hopefully you guys are ready for that. Also, just wanted to mention that if you want to be notified each and every time we gather around the campfire, be sure to subscribe and toll the bell and hit all notifications. Also, there are new items in the shop and on Teespring, and new items will continue to be added throughout the month of October. There are tons of new designs, and I don't always update you guys <laughs> uh, when I post them, which is probably not great, but there are just a lot, and so I don't always post, but be sure to keep checking back and see if there's anything you might be interested in. Also, the prints, pins, and stickers are all 30% off for the entire month of October with no code required. So, and that is in the main shop. With all of that out of the way, I hope you guys are having a really wonderful week. I hope you are enjoying Night Marathon and the campfire stories so far. And without further ado, you know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. I still don't know what happened, but I have chills. I left for work at around 9 and my husband was home with my son for the day. I went to lunch at 12.30. At 1 o'clock, I get a call from an unknown number. Usually, I ignore these calls, but something told me to answer. My five-year-old son was on the other end, crying. He said that he'd been taking a nap and when he woke up, his daddy was gone. I said, okay, I'll come over since I'm still on lunch. I thought maybe my husband went to work in the garage or take a shower or something, and that it just freaked my son out a little when he woke up. I tell him to stay on the line and that it's about a 10 minute drive for me. He doesn't say much, but I can still hear his breathing on the other end. This is where it gets freaky. I have chills even writing this part. As soon as I enter the end of my block, the phone call ends. I pull into the driveway and his car is still there. The front door is shut. My neighbor is getting groceries from his car so I say a quick greeting and head inside. My son and husband are sitting on the couch together watching TV. My husband is playing on the cell phone. I asked him what happened and he looks at me completely confused. I tell him about the call and he acts like he doesn't believe me. I thought it was a crappy prank from him. So I asked my son, did you call mommy and say you couldn't find daddy? My son looks at me and says, no, can I have a juice box? He's too young to be that good at lying and he doesn't really lie anyway. He's usually pretty forthright, so I 100% believe him. I know my son's voice. There's no doubt in my mind that it was him. Maybe if he was younger, but at five years old, I can distinctly tell the voice. I can see how maybe it was a scammer, but how would anybody be able to mimic his voice so perfectly? I don't know how somebody could steal his voice because he doesn't like to talk on phones, and I only have a handful of recordings of him. In those recordings, his voice is high-pitched and happy. On the phone, he was crying. I feel like I'm going crazy at this point. I asked my husband if he'd ever left the room or given our son the cell phone. He says no to both. 
I check the call logs on that phone and there's nothing. We don't have any other phones of any type in the house. I still don't know what happened, but I'm beyond creeped out. I've always had a feeling that something is in our house since the first year we moved in. It's now been 13 years. I've grown up with this belief. As a kid, I always saw a black figure in a cowboy hat, or just a regular black figure, standing or walking in the hallway outside my room. I haven't seen that figure in a long time, but I do get the uneasy feeling of being watched at times. A lot of times, actually, but continuing on with the story. About a year ago is when I first heard a voice that did not belong to anybody in my family. I was home alone at the time, and I was in the kitchen doing dishes. Our kitchen faces our front yard and has a huge bay window. I'm a singer, so I was singing while doing the dishes like I normally do. And in my ear, I clearly heard a deep male voice singing a part with me. I was home alone at the time, and afterward I checked every room to make 100% sure that I was alone. And I definitely was. I stopped singing and finished the dishes and went to sit with my cats in the living room. I watched TV, but the house had such an uneasy feeling. It was definitely not pleasant. That happened maybe less than a year ago. A few months ago, everyone was home and my mom called me into the living room to ask if I had been calling her. I told her that I hadn't and that I was just doing some things in my room, either watching YouTube or cleaning up or something. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, she told me that she could have sworn she heard me calling her. Again, I told her that I hadn't been. I brushed it off as it could have just been my brother and she thought it was me. A few days ago, my brother came to us from doing laundry in the basement and asked us if we were talking or calling him. We hadn't called him or said his name, so we said no. My mom has also told me that she heard my dad call her while he wasn't even in the house, when his car wasn't even in the driveway. Over the weekend, I came home from work at about 5 a.m. I work overnights at a restaurant and I don't usually get home until this time and I usually start at 6 p.m. I came home and the next morning my parents told me that they distinctly heard my voice and they were sure that it was mine, talking to them from upstairs. They thought that I had gotten home early, but I wasn't home until 5 a.m. Then on Sunday I was down in the basement changing the air filter which was already giving me this feeling of not being alone or being watched. I come upstairs and my dad asked if I had called him or was talking to him. I said that I hadn't been because I wasn't and even if I was, nobody can really hear you from the basement unless you scream. He told me he was positive that someone had said, Mike, what the hell are you doing? And he was positive that it was my voice. I know that something is in this house. I have known it ever since I was a kid, but it's never spoken like that before. It scared me a lot when I was younger, but I'm 20 now and even though I've gotten braver, I feel like it's learned new weaknesses and is definitely more active on bad days or in rough times. Anyone have any ideas on what this thing could be? I live in Brampton, Ontario, if that helps. A lot of this town used to be a huge graveyard, and there are cemeteries everywhere. If you know what this could be, let me know. I don't identify as a medium. I'm just very sensitive to energy. I pick up on spirits because I can sense them, like I sense the energy of people, animals, and places. Needless to say, I'm an exhausted empath and have picked up some unfriendly Caspers along the way. 
Last month, I was staying at my boyfriend's old house the week before we moved to a new city. Our town was very old, and according to a friend who does identify as a medium, crawling with spirits. I don't know how old the string of apartment houses was, but it's safe to bet at around 80 plus years old. One night, I was going to bed when I felt something standing next to the bed. This happens a lot, and it's usually not very strong, and I can't tell if it's my paranoia or the real thing, so I typically ignore it. However, I had been reading about the paranormal, so I was a little bit more inclined that night to think of the supernatural. While doing so, reading, I suddenly got a flash feeling of a college-aged girl, something about navy blue and hot pink. She might have had those brown Ugg boots on. If this was a spirit, she couldn't have died that long ago based on her clothing. The emotions off her were a little intense, and I felt uncomfortable, so I tried calling on my guides and ancestors to help me not attach to this spirit and to set up strong energy shields. That night, I had a dream that something from the back porch was wordlessly calling out to me, trying to get me to come to it. In the dream, it was a humid, warm summer night instead of the frigid cold we'd been experiencing. The energy was urging me to come outside, to come see what it had to show me. I get surreal and eerie dreams all the time, but this one felt off and I remember feeling unnerved. I didn't go outside. The next night, my boyfriend and I were laying in bed, just laughing and joking. I felt that girl's presence come around again but I felt her notice how happy my boyfriend and I seemed to be. It almost felt like she was touched by how cute we were together. Or maybe she was just happy to find some emotion she could manipulate, I don't know. I felt her disappear. The next day I was laying on the couch in the main room. My boyfriend had left a little while ago to sell some of his old books, and I was alone in the house. I thought I sensed that presence. But my senses are always on, and even if it were true, I really didn't want to think about it, so I kept on reading my book. All of a sudden, I felt a solid wave of energy approach me. Something was on the other side of the couch, and in all shapes and form, it felt exactly like my boyfriend. I'm quite familiar with how my boyfriend feels energetically, being close with him, and this was a horrifyingly exact replica. I felt affection and friendliness coming from it, and I heard and sensed it speak. It said, I killed myself, crashed my car. All of this was said casually and friendly, not with a lot of emotion or the right emotion, but just with his normal day-to-day -day tone. I felt it sending me love and affection, but really sending it to me pushing up against the energy barriers that I had set up earlier. Needless to say, since I have had experience feeling people's energy or predicting events through those flashes of sense, I freaked out. My heart was racing because what if? What if he had crashed and this was him visiting me to say goodbye? What if this was my last chance to connect with him? I also have really bad anxiety and am kept up by thoughts like this in my worst times. In my fear and worry, I started cracking a bit. I reached out a bit to connect with this presence. I felt a huge surge of energy that I hadn't sensed before rush in, getting through my barriers and permeating my chest. The boyfriend feeling went away, as did most of my own energy and sense of groundedness. I felt the way that I had pre-shielding, anxious and ungrounded and not completely safe in my body. Safe to say, this boyfriend presence wasn't actually my boyfriend, who is sitting alive and well across from me right now at my kitchen table as I write this. My suspicions are that this spirit needed to attach to living beings for their energy, and when they saw how I cared for my boyfriend, they disguised themselves as him in order to get me to open up. I've encountered a lot of half-explained spirits, but never one who could mimic so strongly. I'm still trying to work on personal energy protection, 
And I hope that this thing isn't still hanging around. I don't really know how to word this so that it sounds coherent, but I'll try my best. Let me preface that I am currently staying with two other people, my mother and my older brother. It's 2.07 a.m. and this happened about an hour ago. My mom is asleep. I was in the living room and to the left of the couch I was on is our dining room. The dining room connects to the kitchen and in the kitchen there's a door that leads to the basement. That's where my brother's room is. Now, I only have one brother, but something was apparently mimicking him. So I'll call the mimic brother too. My brother was rolling a cigarette and turned the dining room light on. I asked him to please turn it off when he was done. He agreed and proceeded to go into the kitchen for something. And then he went outside to smoke said cigarette. At this point, my brother, who was really the mimic at this point, comes back inside after smoking and went into the kitchen. He didn't turn the dining room light off like I had asked, and then he asked me if I could please be quiet. He can hear when somebody walks around his room as it's directly under the living room, and then he went downstairs. So this is where I'm confused. About an hour later, my actual brother came inside. I was really confused as to who was unlocking the door because both my mom and my brother were home. My actual brother was telling me how he had actually been out just driving around. And then he went downstairs and asked me to be quiet. Now I'm not familiar with the mimic spirits or ones like that. So I'm not sure if I just encountered one, but it wasn't my brother who came in before my real brother. I'm just really confused. My actual brother says he remembers telling me to be quiet before he left, but that doesn't explain how he got outside without coming upstairs, because he locked the door when he left. If anybody has any idea what happened, I would be more than grateful if you shared your ideas. Something strange happened to me years ago, but after all these years, the whole event still feels so paranormal. I don't know what to make of it, so I'm sharing this for any perspective or feedback. When I was nine months old, my dad drowned in a freak accident. He was helping friends loose a canoe that had gotten stuck in the river. The undertow snagged him and nobody saw him alive again. They found him a few days later, a couple of miles down the river. 20 years later, I'm camping with my girlfriend at the time, now ex, and my best bro and his girlfriend. It's a beautiful summer night in the Pacific Northwest, and it was about 9.30 p.m., so mostly dark. My friend and I hiked a short trip to this rock overhang that had a perfect view of the river. We lit up some cigarettes, sipped on a beer, chatted, and took in the view. We're two minutes into this, and this happens. Across the riverbank, I see my dad standing there, staring at me. Obviously, I don't remember knowing him, but I do have an image in my mind of him from pictures I've seen. He looked exactly like my dad at the time that he died. I hit my friend and ask him if he's seen this scene, but he doesn't. Then a sort of spotlight blasts my dad, and he immediately breaks the stair and walks to his left about 20 feet down the river. He goes a little ways back into the trees. Slowly, he starts pulling some tools and a rope out of a cache or bag. At this point, I am pale and shaking. My friend worried because I'm staring into the darkness, not responding. But what was I seeing? The whole other side of the riverbank was now a stage, lit up, and my dad was working on something with his back to me. He finally turns around, and he has a noose in his hands. He throws it over a tree branch, proceeds to slip it around his neck, says nothing, 
and hangs himself while staring directly at me. We had odd experiences for the rest of the night, but nothing like that. I'm now 41, and I still haven't integrated this experience. It really messed me up, and I can't help but wonder, did he really drown, or is that what I was told? Was that some kind of evil spirit just messing with me to torture me? I had had numerous close calls with Side as a young adult, but never by hanging. Was my dad telling me a hidden truth? Was that something else? A mimic? It's been a strange one. I had bought a small charcoal grill, the kind you can get at Walmart for like 20 bucks. I've been using it every night as a fire pit for the past few weeks. Tonight was no different. About 7 p.m., the sun is going down, so I decided I would put some charcoal in my fire pit and relax outside with the natural ambiance. It was going great until around 8 p.m. As the fire was just really getting going, I heard the loudest screech. It was like the yell of a human mixed with an animal and both of them were being murdered. Now, before you say anything, I know, my first thought was, it's a mountain lion. Even though I was in an area surrounded by fields, no trees for miles. Not wanting a little mountain lion to ruin my evening, I decided to stay outside. While watching the fire, I put on some YouTube, how to medieval blacksmith videos, as you do. I pretty much forgot the incident and just enjoyed the videos. Then suddenly, after about an hour, the hair stands up on the back of my neck and goosebumps cover my body. This feeling was one of the most panic-inducing feelings I've ever felt in my entire life. I would also like to mention that I'm a person who, admittedly stupidly, has walked in the woods at night and into sketchy street areas in the city. I've also had my fair share of the fabled dark web. I've seen plenty of really morbid things. I've done a lot of really stupid things. And I don't get scared. Ever. So this feeling was really out of character for me. I felt something was really wrong. So I decided to put out the fire and carry my chair back home. As I'm walking back to my house, I see a shadow man. He was standing by my mother's car. This thing was way too big to be a human. I mean, the shape was similar to that of a human, but it was jet black, way too tall, and it had ears that popped out. I stared at it for about three to five seconds because I thought my eyes were playing a trick on me. This thing was so tall, waist length was the top of my mother's Toyota RAV4. However, after a few seconds, I knew that this was not something I wanted to fight with, if I even could. I ran back to my house, locked the door, opened a window and tried to take a photo of it, but by that point it had disappeared. I'm trying to rationalize what this was. So if anybody knows what it could have been and you have a natural explanation, great. But if you don't, what do you think I should do? What do you think that thing was? Am I safe? Am I going crazy? I have no idea. I'm not sure what happened to me, but I'm going to describe it as best I can. First off, I live in the southern United States, and I'm a male in my 20s. I have experienced many things in my life, many strange and unusual things, and even though I believe in the paranormal and the supernatural, I always use logic first. But this, I genuinely can't explain. It's not incredibly scary just strange. About three years ago, 
I woke up suddenly from sleep. This is not unusual for me, as I have insomnia, and usually I don't sleep. If I do, it isn't for long. My bed is pressed sideways on two big windows in the bedroom, so close that I can actually raise the blinds from my bed while lying down. At the time, my blinds on the window closet to the top of the bed broke, so I just put a big thin blanket over it to block out the light, even though it didn't do that great of a job, but it was well enough. My girlfriend was with me that night, and she was fast asleep when I jolted awake. I stared at the ceiling for a bit, before I turned my head toward the window. The moon was shining brightly, with some light coming through the blanket. I could see the shadow of the tree and bushes outside of my window, but I could also see another shadow. It was the outline of what looked like a person. Well, I was half asleep and actually laughed, thinking that it was just the way the trees and bushes came together, matrixing, you know? Like it was kind of an illusion. I leaned up and tapped on the window as a joke, and this thing's head moved a bit and it took off faster than any human could move. I mean, within seconds, it just disappeared. I jumped out of bed, waking up my girlfriend next to me. I told her that somebody was outside the window, so I got a combat knife, I keep it next to my bed, and my flashlight. I ran outside and I didn't see anything. It was quiet. I went back in and I couldn't fall asleep knowing whatever was outside the window could have been staring at me for god knows how long. Here's the reason why I tell this. Here's the reason why I think it's paranormal. I went out the next day to look again. Now it was autumn at this time with leaves and branches everywhere. So if it was someone standing outside of my window, well, there would have been footprints, along with broken branches from the bushes near my window. This thing was standing close to the window, but nothing was touched. Also, no human could run as fast as that thing did. And now that I think about it, I didn't hear any crunching sounds when it took off either. What the hell happened that night? This experience is a little bit foggy in my mind since it happened four years ago. I went to Bangladesh with my family four years ago to visit my cousins. We stayed in my cousin's apartment, and my parents, my two sisters, and I shared a room. I had jet lag since I live in Canada, so this is a few days into the trip, and I'm watching a YouTube video where the creator was talking about the shadow man in the fedora. I remember not being scared at all and just going to bed. I tried sleeping, but I couldn't due to the jet lag, even though I was very tired. The bed that I was sleeping in had that thing that you put over it to keep mosquitoes out, and I slept for about an hour, and then I woke up. I looked up to see that there was a shadow near the rope of the thing I mentioned earlier. I thought it was my sister getting up to use the bathroom. But when I turned my head, I saw that she was sleeping next to me. I got weirded out, but for some reason, I wasn't scared. The figure wasn't moving, and it was wearing a fedora. I woke up the next day super confused, and I was asking all the people in the apartment if it was one of them. It wasn't, so I blamed it on the lack of sleep, the jet lag, the power of suggestion, and moved on with the rest of my trip. However, around a year after this trip, I had another experience. It was my dad's birthday and my sister decided to get him a striped red, blue, and yellow polo shirt. When I saw that shirt, I remembered that a while ago, I had also seen that shirt. It was an original looking shirt, so I remembered right away where I had seen it. My two sisters and I share a room. One night, I woke up and saw that same shadow standing near the window with his fedora hat but this time he was wearing that polo shirt. I stared at him, not being scared once again, but went back to sleep. When I woke up, my sister told me that she saw the exact same thing that I did that night. We both woke up, but at different times. I don't really believe in the paranormal, but I don't really know what this experience was. 
either of them actually. Was it just me being tired twice? Or was it something really strange? This is 100% my experience, whether or not it was paranormal.